only two things can get you through this, man. That's patience and persistence. We all aspire. We all have the same emotions. You know, no matter who you are, where you're from, we all have the same emotions. You know, we all want to be successful. You know, we all have the same fears of failure. We all have, you know, uh, you know, this uh, feelings of abandonment. We all, you know, want love. Have uh, such a strong belief in yourself that you can quiet out all the outside noise because that's you're gonna need that on every step of the way. There are people that that are projecting their fears and their um, shortcomings and failures on you, and you have to be very careful, you know, with that. People telling you can't do that. Why can't I? Because they may have tried, or they don't believe that they can do it, and it's not really about you. It's about what they feel and their uh, fear inside. So you have to be strong enough and resilient to believe in whatever it is you're trying to do. My uncle, he was telling me like. I'm never gonna. My uncle said I never sold a million records. I sold a million records like a million times. Are you crazy? How are you gonna do that? How? You know, I'm sure there's things that I do now that he, he can't believe that I was able to accomplish. But he couldn't even see it at the time. So he was just projecting, putting his fears on me. Lock my body, can't trap my mind. Easily explain why we adapt to crime. I'd rather die enormous than live dormant. That's how we on it. And you got to understand the reason, right? Why does that guy think like that? Right? How do, how do you arrive at that point? You got to also look at that. You have to look at that. You got to look at the environments and places we live in and how things are set up and how things are structured and how we're always the last on the totem pole, even from our school and to our roads to you know, everything that, that, all the obstacles that's placed in front of us. Even our living condition. You live in a project. Someone lives here, 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 and here. You know, you have to deal with all these different type of personalities. You have, you're in the box. Someone's above you, below you, to the right of you, and to the left of you. And every day you have to manage that circle. So, live, that's like living dormant. Life is about balance, right? You have to have some type of balance. You have, like, time for work and it's time for play and if you don't allow these two things to coexist you have an imbalance people look at you strange saying you change like you work that hard to stay the same like you're doing all this for a reason and what happens most of the time people change people change around you because they start treating you different because of your success so you are changing you don't change who you are the core of who you are the things you believe the things you love and the things you die for and your principles you don't change that but you're going to change who you are you're going to change you know you can't do the same things that you, you can't hang on the corner be true to yourself you know it sounds like a very simple thing to do but it's not it's not simple to do with all the pressures to succeed and all the pressures to once you succeed to stay there you have a belief in yourself and some and sometimes in most cases it's almost a naivete about who you are and what you can contribute to um to the game belief in oneself and knowing who you are i mean that's the foundation of everything great No, I just don't care about it. It's, it's like it's almost like a loser's mentality. It's like everyone's so spoiled. Like it's it's like you know, uh, uh, he won't let me shine. I even heard someone say like, "Yo, why Jay won't let Kanye?" I'm like, "Let Kanye. Kanye's Kanye. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do what he does. That's a loser's mentality." My albums came out with Outkast, Lauren, Q-Tip, all of them in one week. You know, everybody did good. You know, look at look at the chart now. It's it's Wale, number one. Like Rock Nation managed artist uh, J. Cole Which will probably go to number one next week again um, But no, for the first time ever But he'll go to next number one Rock Nation and it's Kanye Everyone's flourishing You know, you gotta be out You gotta be able to compete Still sharp and still You gotta get out there And you gotta earn your spot It's not given It's such a, a, a Spoil you brat Loses mentality that's, it's, it's, it's annoying there's a knowing in being an artist. There's a knowing. You can't guess. You can't think. 
is a knowing. You have to know that even if it doesn't work today, tomorrow, this artists that I play that weren't popular at the time, that I play more than I play current artists. Shiggy Otis, I suggest you just go look up Shiggy Otis. It was amazing. And at the time, it wasn't this hugely popular thing, but I think we, I think when it all was said and done, you would play that music more than any other music, right? So you have to have this knowing that, okay, it may not work today, it may not work tomorrow, but this is the right thing, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what's feeding me. So I'll, that, that would be the best advice that I can, I can give you, that knowing, just just believe in what you're doing. And if you don't believe in it, then you're not doing it. You, you, you haven't figured out the thing that you do best yet. When you feel it and when you know, no one can tell you. It, you only have to be right once. Mm. Um, I, I got up around eight, <laughs> had some breakfast, we ran a mile, really tough. A mile. From Aspen. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to do it real good. I mean, everyone can't be like you, man. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's gone, it's <laughs> gone away. So, you know, uh, ran a mile, then I went to um, the office, read a bunch of emails, did some more emails, downloaded some music. <laughs> had a meeting with um, some great people. I don't want to say your name yet. After that, uh, this is music. Went to the studio. Had dinner. Oh, went to the next game. We won. We're, we're up 3 2. Thank you very much. Um, went to sleep. Good day, full day. Great day. Yeah, we was going to club exit. And uh we get into the, the we get in the front of the club, we pull up and, and Big sees some guys out there and he says, Man, I'm not I'm not going in there. And I'm like, What? He's like, nah, uh these guys over there, I don't I'm not even, you know, uh, you know, I don't feel like it tonight. So me and Tata, you know, we just came in the music business, we don't really understand what he's saying, we think he's scared. So we like, what? Let us out this car right now. So me and Tata leave the car and we talking about Big behind his back. And we was like, man, you, could you believe that, man? You scared of these guys? We, well, we wanted to prove to the guys in front of the club that we wasn't scared. So we go in the club, Big pulls off, and, and for a while, I thought that he was really scared of these guys until later on I realized that he had a bigger goal and he knew where he was going and he didn't want to deal with it. He wasn't scared. It was just like, why do, why put himself in that position if he didn't have to? And I thought that was genius. And I guess that helps me a lot as well. And I thought that question was great. Thank you. It's always good to compare yourself to people you look up to, right? Because you, you give yourself a high goal. You set the high standards for yourself. And, um, you know, pretty much the way he lived his life and the parallels and how he affected the culture is what I strive to do. He had a record label and he owned Reprise Records and he released Jimi Hendrix. Tommy Kanye West is my Jimi Hendrix, you know, my record label is Rockefeller. <laughs> you know, just compare yourself to the greats, set you. the bar really high. <laughs> because all he can do is the best he can do. He's not a superhero. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair to place unfulfillable expectations on this man just mm -hmm. because of his color. Mm -hmm. You're actually doing the opposite. It's, it's like, what do you think is going to happen? He's, he's there for eight years. Mm -hmm. And he has to undo what 43 presidents have done mm -hmm. in eight years. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. What do you think of the state of, I'm not going to say just black leadership, leadership period on the things you care about in the country? Who do you like look at and say, this man or woman I speaks think, uh, for the things I care about? <laughs> it's going to be funny. <laughs> I find it funny, but my, my leadership, I like Dave Chappelle's leadership. <laughs> Because he tells it in humor so you can deal with it, but it's always a bit, a, a nice chunk of truth in it. I can only assume, because I don't know the answer to that, except that, you know, sometimes people's success, you know, make people feel, instead of saying, wow, that person's successful, and, uh, I'm, I'm inspired. Well, some people are. Some people are like, that person's successful, I'm going I'm to strive, and I'm be exactly where they are. And some people are just like, they got the reverse attitude, like, their success means my failure. So I hate that success. So I have to, I have to make some kind of 
the explanation of why they're here, why they shouldn't be here, and then why they wouldn't be here if this person was here. Who thinks like that? If you take that Black long people. to think, Black if, you, if you take that long to think about someone why they sh shouldn't be here, then you're good, mm -hmm. and you should be doing something with that intelligence. <laughs> <laughs>